hello and here we are at the baby lock shack and today I'm going to be looking at the Victory. The Victory is the first in the baby lock range that has both automatic threading and automatic tensions. So to start with I'll just talk you through the various controls. So the top one here is our stitch width. As I move that the blade moves in and out. There are two sets of numbers. The top number is the distance of the blade to the left needle and the number below is the distance of the blade to the right needle. This one here locks the blade down if you don't want to cut the fabric and what it does on this model is very useful actually because the blade is locked but slightly flush slightly above the needle plate which means you can then use that as a guide if you don't want to cut your fabric as you're stitching um, particularly useful for something like a flat lock because you don't have to cut the fold in the fabric next one down let's put that back on again this is my stitch length now it's measured in millimeters it goes up to four millimeters Around one side it says standard, that's for my standard seams where the looper tensions are both balanced and around the other side it says rolled hem. Now that's for when the uh, lower looper needs to be tighter than the upper looper in order to create that rolled hem effect. And what that does is if I turn this around it takes the stitch finger here out of work so that enables me to do a rolled hem because it's the stitch finger that supports the edge of the fabric as you're doing your basic standard seams and then when you want a rolled hem the lower looper pulls tighter and it rolls the fabric over using the stitches now the other thing that's important with this machine is you can see here the stitch finger rather than sliding forwards it rotates down now that means that they've been able to put the blade a little bit closer to the needles and therefore this machine will take sharper curves more easily and here we have our stitch selector that is the thing that replaces tensions so basically, A is a wide seam using both needles. B is a narrow seam using just the right needle. C is my rolled hem for thick fabrics. And D is my rolled hem for fine fabrics. Now when I have this set on A and B, I need to have my stitch length dial set on standard. And when I have it set on C and D, I need to have this turned round to the rolled hem setting. This one here is the biggest advantage that you have over your sewing machine when you have an overlocker because this is my differential feed and basically on here, let me open that and show you, you have two sets of feed dogs. <clears throat> one at the back and one at the front. The back set of feed dogs always go at the same speed. I can adjust the speed of the front feed dogs with the differential feed. So when I put that up to two, the front feed dogs are going twice as fast as the back ones. In other words, that is gathering the fabric. When I set it down to 0.6, the front feed dog is going at almost half the speed of the back one. And that is the setting that you would use to create a lettuce edge on a stretch or on a bias cut fabric. So threading the victory is incredibly easy. Because you've got the looper threads going through tubes, this particular machine can be threaded in any order at all. 
uh, normally on a, a, a standard type of overlocker you would thread upper looper, lower looper, right needle, then left needle but this one there's no danger of the threads crossing over one another in this so we can thread any order at all. So I'm going to start with the lower looper and we need to close the tube so I have to press this button here they come out part way and then I turn the balance wheel until the tubes close. The machine now won't work. So I take the lower looper thread, which is on the far right, over the tension mast. You must always thread with the foot up. Down through the channel and then I pop half an inch of thread into the rightmost hole. Leave a nice long loop and this is attached to a set of bellows which when I press it will send a jet of air down the tube and it will come out here. Like so. There we are. And all I need to do is to trim that to about that length and it will sort itself out. With this machine I don't have to put the threads under the foot. So this is the upper looper. That goes into the third channel. I slide the lever across to the U for upper looper. Again, half an inch goes down there. That one is going to come out here, like that. Needles, now for the needles, I need to open the tubes and line up the two green marks on the balance wheel there. And now to thread over the tension mast, clip into here, under, over, and there is a slider on here for left and right needle. So I just take the thread, hold it up, and there it's threaded. Slide across for the left needle. Incidentally, never pull knots through those tension clips. There's a double set of springs in there, specifically designed to eliminate thread tangles. So if you pull a knot through there, you might damage the, the springs. Down comes the needle threader. Just hold it up and under the two fingers. And there we go. I can leave the thread where it is, over the top of the foot, just trim off the excess and you're ready to go. To my mind, one of the best advantages of the Victory is the fact that it has auto tensions. So once you've set your stitch selector up and told it what stitch you want to do, as you see, I've currently got it set on A, that's because I'm using the left needle. Once you've done that, whatever the fabric you throw at it, it will adjust itself accordingly. So I have my stitch width set at seven and a half, my stitch length set at three, and my differential feed set at N. So first I'm gonna put fleece under the foot. And as soon as the foot has ridden up onto the thickness of the fabric, it will detect that thickness and it will adjust itself accordingly. So there is your fleece. And then I can go straight over to t-shirt fabric, cotton jersey. Incidentally, if you're just learning, there is no need to raise the foot every time you start. Let's do that again so you can see. Just lift the front of the foot with your thumb. The feed dogs are efficient enough that it will pull it in automatically.
jersey and as you see it still maintains a really good stretch denim Incidentally, if you can see both needle lines on the front there, then you are looking at the upper looper. If you can't see both needle lines, then you are looking at the lower looper. You see the lower looper makes like a V-shape. So there we have denim. And the last one is organza. And once again, despite the fact that it's such a fine fabric, it will still adjust itself and give me a perfect tension every time. There we go. Differential feed I've spoken briefly about and explained to you that the f you're adjusting the speed of the front feed dogs. If I now set my stitch length to four, and my differential feed to two. The front feed dogs are going twice as fast as the back ones. And this is what happens. We have a really efficient gather. Right, so to show you the different stitches that it does, I'm going to reset the differential feed to N. Uh, I shall put the stitch length to two and a half in this instance, I think. And we're going to remove that leftmost needle. You'll notice I'm a bit of a wimp. I don't cut the thread first. I remove the needle first. That way, if I happen to drop it, it's swinging on the thread rather than dropping into the machine. However, if you do manage to drop it into the machine, it will usually fall into, there's a tray underneath there, and that's where the needle will normally drop into. So I've removed the leftmost needle. I'm now going to set my stitch selector to B, and I'm going to reduce my stitch width to medium. Stitch length is at two and a half. I've changed over to calico. It's not the nicest fabric in the world, but it will give you a good chance to see exactly what the stitches are doing. Don't forget to put the foot down. So this is a narrow seam. This is a stitch that is not as strong as your four thread overlock. However, I use it a lot for areas where there's no great stress on the seam. So I use it for maybe um, stitching lace onto a garment and for edging, interfacing to keep a nice neat edge. Um, as you see, incredibly quick and easy to do. We can then take that, if we line those stitches up a little bit more closely, so if I put this stitch length now to one and a half, if I may be lining a skirt or something and I don't want to have too much bulk in the hem of that skirt, let's put those stitches just a little bit closer. It's almost at one now, it's about one and a quarter. I will often use that same stitch as a nice neat edging because that as a hem will not affect the drape of the fabric. And for the last stitch I'm going to show you in this rather brief demo, I'm going to set the stitch selector to D 
and I'm going to turn that stitch length dial round to the rolled hem setting around one and a half. And that is an incredibly good rolled hem and it also works equally well on fine fabrics. Let's try it on this piece of organza. A beautiful rolled hem. As you can see, to my mind, one of the easiest of the overlockers on the market today. It is a cracking little machine and if you decide to go for it, I'm sure it will give you many, many hours of easy sewing. <laughs>